Hi everyone, welcome to the course. In today's course, you will learn how to create photorealistic deliverables in a matter of minutes. We will take a deep dive into Adlux. Adlux is the essential visualization plugin for Unreal Engine. A digital twin photo studio, a simplified render interface, a one-click render button, lighting presets, camera motion and cinematic presets, an AI studio randomizer, and much more. This video requires Adlux to be installed into your engine. It is possible to follow the video without Adlux, but I can highly recommend checking them out. After you've purchased Adlux on their website, we must go over to the plugin tab. Here, select the installer. You will find the installer for Adlux. Download the installer and run it. At this point in time, the installer is unrecognized by Windows Defender. So if you're prompted with this window, then make sure to click the More Info menu and select Run Anyway. When the installer has opened, click Next. Here agree with the terms and conditions and log in with the created account upon purchase. This way, the license will get pinged from the server. In the next window, we can select our engine version. Newer versions will automatically appear in this window upon availability. In the next window, we must set our installation path. It's very important to set the path to the Unreal Engine plugin folder. After the path has been successfully located, we can install the plugin. Make sure to close Unreal Engine before doing so. In Unreal Engine, go to Settings, then to Plugins, and make sure that Adlux is set to Enabled. If not, set it to Enabled and restart your engine if needed. We should now see Adlux available in our engine border and under the Window drop-down menu. Let's see how we can utilize Adlux for ArcFish. I have opened my Unreal Engine project. There will be a simplified version of this project available for download, so you can follow along with this course. The link will be in the description below. The scene is real time, which is made possible by the Lumen system here in Unreal Engine 5. If you want to learn more about how to set up Lumen for yourself, check out my detailed course on Lumen for ArcFish. You can find the video link down below. When we open Adlux, we get offered various menus. These are Studio, Lighting, Sequence, and Render. Let's start with the Studio menu. Here in the Studio menu, we can easily set up a photo and video studio. Let's make a new level in our content browser. Open it, and then select one of the studio templates. We are immediately greeted by one of the amazing setups. Not sure what to pick or need some inspiration? Then use the AI randomizer to create unique templates. We can easily change the lighting setup by choosing one of the lighting templates under the lighting menu. Not only can we pick from a wide range of presets, but we can add many lights depending on your needs. We can also swap effortlessly between both optimized versions of Lumen and Path Tracing. Here in the Sequencer menu, we can add various rails to our cameras. These rails help us speed up the process of animating a camera. You can see that when I'm moving the camera over the rail, it stays focused on the object. This is done using a tracker that can be found in the Assets menu. In the same Assets menu, we can also find a 360 camera, a turntable, and a floating track. Scrolling down in the Sequencer menu, we can create sequences for our cameras. Each sequence can be created with their own custom playback and frame rate. And lastly, we have the Render menu, where we can easily swap between different quality options, single shot or sequence render, and alter the general output of our render. With the included Shoot button, we can render out a sequence or multiple still images in a matter of seconds. Now that we had a quick rundown of what Adlux has to offer, we can start producing high quality content. I opened up my level again, and the first thing that we must do is import a camera and tracker to the scene. Navigate to the sequence menu in Adlux, and under Assets, drag and drop the tracker module within the viewport. We position the tracker on an area where we want our camera to focus on. In my case, this is the door, here in my living room. I choose this area because it has a lot of leading lines. These lines help create a sense of depth and direction in our image. They might be a bit harder to find within small interior spaces but they are certainly there. A good place to start is to follow the main foundation lines of walls, ceilings, floors, and windows. I can highly recommend searching for leading lines in interior photography, 
and study the way photographs are taken. With the tracker in the right place, we can now add a camera. The camera can also be found here under the assets in the Adlex plugin. Now if we drag and drop the camera in the viewport, it will automatically track the previously imported tracker. If we want straight images, we need to make sure that the camera and tracker are parallel to one another. A fast way to do this is to copy the tracker's position in the details panel. Then select the camera and paste the information in the camera's world position. Now drag the camera back. You will find that they are parallel to one another. To make sure we are centered, we must go to the perspective drop-down menu here in our viewport and set it to cinematic. Now preview the place camera and add a grid by going over to the composition overlay drop-down menu. This will give us a grid that can help with the alignment of the camera. Selecting the camera and then the tracker in the outliner gives us a gizmo in the viewport to move. Slightly adjust the camera to your needs. For this particular space, which is very small, a camera aspect ratio of 16 by 9 won't work great. But before we change this, we need to change the focal length. We can do this by selecting our camera here in the outliner, and in the details panel under lens settings, change the min and max focal length to the desired length. For interior photography, we usually use a lens with a focal length between 60mm and 24mm. This sweet spot strikes a harmonious balance, allowing us to capture a room's grandeur without distorting its proportions. This rule doesn't have to be followed strictly, as it won't apply in all spaces. For smaller spaces, I tend to use a value between 8 and 12 millimeters. But we can now see when we use a wide angle that things get a little distorted. What we can do here is change the film back settings in our camera. I'm gonna set mine to 10 by 12 millimeters. This should drastically change our image. We can copy this process for all our cameras within the scene. After doing so, we should have multiple cameras set up with our desired shots. All that we need to do now to render our final image is to make some changes here in the Adlex render menu. We could use one of the quality presets. However, making changes ourselves to all the given options gives us much more control over the output. So let's see what we can change. It's important to set the output to single shot. Select the file output path and make sure to change the resolution if needed. This is especially important when you change the sensor width and height of the camera. If you don't choose the exact pixel to sensor rate, the aspect ratio on the camera will change. I picked a value of 10 by 12 millimeters. I know that one millimeter translates to one pixel. So doing the math, we will get 10 by 12 pixels. We can scale this number up by either adding a zero or increasing it by the power of two. For me, that will result in a value of 4000 by 4800 pixels. For the samples, set the quality to custom and change the number of samples. You could use any of the presets as they are wonderful. But personally, I set my sample count to 2 by 32. This gives me the best result. And finally, we can hit the shoot button to create our still images. A great way of enhancing a client's experience or your portfolio is by rendering an animation. An animation can help drastically because it creates emotion and atmosphere through music and motion. We can help our clients showcase functionality better and capture transitions between rooms. We must know that there are five key techniques for interior animation. Number one, the peaking effect, which creates intimacy and intrigues the audience. Number two, which is focus shift, which helps to direct viewers' attention and enhances the narrative depth by creating an emotional impact and building suspense. 3 is Immersion. Here you will explore the space to give a sense of size and functionality. Number 4 is Close-ups, which are used to create intimacy, reveal detail, and focus the viewer's attention. And lastly, we have First Person Animation. This helps by creating immersion, creating a sense of scale, and generating a personal connection. When we are creating our animation, it's important to use these 5 key techniques to optimize the impact our animation has on the audience. Let's see how we can implement these techniques in practice. To start, we must add a tracker and camera to our scene. We can do this here in the Adlex sequence menu by drag and dropping the tracker and camera module in a viewport, just like before. Let's position the camera with the previously mentioned five key techniques in mind. Now that we have set the camera in the right place, we need to navigate back to the Adlex sequencer menu 
and add a rail to our camera. First, make sure the camera is selected in the outliner. Then in the rig rail presets, select the preferred rail. If needed, the rail settings can be adjusted in the rail settings menu here in Adlux. When a rail preset is added, we can see that the rail appears on our camera here in the viewport. With the rail selected, we can adjust the camera's current position on the rail. This is the movement that will reflect in our sequence. Let's create a sequence here in the Adlux menu under Level Sequence. Make sure to check New Sequence. Personally, I'm using a total frame amount of around 300, with a frame rate of 24. This will ultimately decide the speed of which my camera is moving. When we aren't happy with the speed, we can alter the frame amount to a higher or lower number, depending on if we want our shot to move faster or slower. When that is all set, click Prepare Level Sequence. When prompted that our camera doesn't match the output resolution, simply click it away. We do this so our camera resolution stays the same as the way it's been set up. A sequence is now created and opened. When we view our camera and click play here in the sequencer, we can see that the camera moves over the timeline accordingly. All we need to do now is repeat this process until we have enough sequences to create a short clip. It's important to switch up the motion from horizontal, vertical, and curved. This ensures we create a good dynamic in our final animation. An animation of one minute is sufficient. When all the cameras are set up, we need to open the render menu in Edlux once more. This time, we need to make sure that we set our render output to sequence instead of single shot. Next, make sure that the sequence frame count and frame rate match with the created sequences. Set an output path and adjust the resolution to the desired value. For the samples, a 2x32 sample rate works great for interior animations rendered with Lumen, but feel free to adjust this number to your needs. Select the desired file format and then make sure to turn off the denoiser. Once done, we can select any camera within our outliner or multiple if needed and click shoot. When our sequences are done rendering, we can put it together in any video editing software. All that we must do is create a timeline, arrange the clips, choose a song, and hit render. We can add some amazing interaction and immersion to our portfolio of stills and animations by adding an interactive 360 render. 360 degree walkthroughs provide a realistic, immersive experience that allows architects, designers, clients, and stakeholders to visualize defining building a design more efficiently than traditional 2D drawings or static 3D models would. Let's see how we can utilize Adlux to create a 360 image of high quality in a matter of seconds. Under the sequence tab here in Adlux, drag and drop the 360 camera into the viewport, place the camera in its desired location. Here in the Details panel, set the Exposure Metering Mode to Manual and adjust the Exposure Compensator to the desired result. Now, in the Adlex Render menu, switch to Single Shot. Under Output, set a File Output Path. Next, under Resolution, set it to either 8K or Custom. I find that 16K works great. Keep in mind that the rendering time is drastically increased. For samples, we use the same amount of 2x32, which in my scenario works the best for Lumen. When that is all set, we can hit shoot. After some time, Adlux has generated a 360 image for us. So far, we have generated quite the portfolio. We have created beautiful stills, an impressive animation, and an interactive and immersive 360 panorama of our interior. All this with just a few clicks using Adlux. We still need a fair bit of knowledge to be able to create captivating imagery, but the tips given in this video should point you in the right direction. That aside, we can save a lot of time using Adlux within our projects. It's efficient, of high quality, and very easy to use. I hope this video was helpful, and I want to thank everybody for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good day.